like Daniel, throughout the whole Bible, people was fasting, and there was a part of life inside of their hearts, amen. In the New Testament, it was, it was a fast channel of power, where God's people realized they needed the power of God, the anointing of God, the enemy was attacking the church of God, but today in our generation, the enemy is even attacking even more so, and I thought about that, if the New Testament church, man, one of their dominant factors, they fasted and they trusted God, if they needed it back then, how many we need it even more so in the days we're living in today? The New Testament church was a church that fasted. And I think we want the power like the New Testament church is supposed to be. If we want the power the New Testament church had, we've got to do what the New Testament church did. And it honored God. It sought God. It, it, it wanted the more of God. In the New Testament, I want you to understand that we begin to realize that it was not only the channel of power of God, the intimacy with God, the revelation with God, but what fasting does, it kills worldliness inside of you. I don't even want the world killed out of me. I want the world out of me. I don't want no part of the world at all. We want our attitudes brought under subjection. Not only that, but it aligns your life, it aligns your, aligns your spirit. When you're fasting, what it does, well, you could be off, but it gets you right back into perspective right again. And I believe a lot of us, we've got to come back from perspective again. We've got to realign ourselves and say, God, I want to honor you. I want to seek you, God. But not only that, if your conviction button is broken, I don't know, fasting will help your conviction button get restored. You know what that means? When you do something bad, all of a sudden the Spirit of God says, hey, that ain't right, man. You need to get this thing right. Some people's conviction button is broken. They keep doing things worse and bad every single day, and they just walk on life like nothing's going on. Like like, like, like there's no, no, uh, no, uh, um, that God doesn't get offended by what they're doing. So it's very important that we as God's people realize today that fasting does a lot for our lives. With fasting, the Spirit of God and the Word of God it awakens the soul. It begins to quicken the heart. It deals with sin in our lives. It brings us, brings us right before the throne of God. And it brings the intimacy, the intimacy of God in our lives. So to fast not only means self-denial. This doesn't mean abstaining from food. But it means not to eat at all. But the normal fast was the one that Jesus did with water. Now, I just want you to look at some things. There's one every kind of fasting. We're going to do what I call a Jesus fast, a normal fast. A normal fast was just with water. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 1 and 3, that Jesus was led by the Spirit of the wilderness and to be tempted by the devil. When he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was a hunger. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to be turned into bread or become bread. We just want to pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, and God, to you we give you all glory, and God, we give you all the honor, God. I pray for our lives, God. I pray that we have an understanding, God, what it is to fast. I pray that you will inspire your people, God, this coming Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, that we will come into a corporate fast, God, to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise. We want to realign ourselves. We want to be right with you, God. We want you to speak to us, God. We want your will to be done in our lives, God. And fathers, I decrease tonight. I pray that you would increase, that you may be glorified. We thank you, and God, we love you, Lord. And everybody believing God, in the name of Jesus, saying amen and amen today. I'm going to wish you a great and awesome God. You see, our Lord and Savior, they fast with no food. You might say, how do you know God that are trusting God? Because listen, they not, might, be, might not be fasting now because I'm with them. They might not be fasting now because the bride of Christ, because I'm the bride, the bridegroom is here. I'm here with them. They don't need to fast. It's a time of feasting, not of fasting. And he tells them, listen, but one day when I'm gone, believe me, they are going to fast. And it's here that we have to understand, he gives them the reason why. They're not going to fast while they're with the bridegroom. They're not going to fast while Christ is there because Christ is pouring in them. It's like I tell people, one day you won't need the Word of God one day. When you get to heaven, you won't need the Word of God. You'll be talking to the Word of God face to face. One day you won't need to go to prayer no more. You can talk to God face to face because the Bible says that we'll be with God. So it's very important that Jesus brings out to John's disciples, to John the Baptist's disciples, and says, listen, one day we're going to fast and we're living in that day to day. It's a new day. It's a day that you you and I have to understand that you and I need to be a people that are fasting for the, for the Lord. That you and I are a people that are getting literally the power of God inside of our lives. See, Jesus, when you understand it, was not only speaking, but he was speaking prophetically. He was saying, listen to me. They are going to fast. When I'm gone, when I when I die, when I when I, when I resurrect, they're going to be fasting. And you guys, we live in a generation today that we need the power of God. We live in a generation today where our culture is trying to shape us and mold us to do what it's called to do. When our God 
God's counsel to stand on his side and follow his ways. In order to do that, we have to be a fasting people in our lives. You see, throughout the Word of God, people fasted. Some people fasted three days, some people fasted 40 days. But throughout the Word of God, you're reading Ezra 10, 6, that Ezra rose up before the house of God and went to the chamber of, of Johan, the son of Elishabib. And when he came thither, he did eat no bread, nor drink no water, for he mourned because of the transgressions of them that had been carried away, and that whatsoever would not come within three days, according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all the subjects should be fortified, and him himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away. What you begin to see is that they fasted for three days, like we're going to fast for three days. I'm not saying that you've got to fast uh, 40 days or 60 days, but we're going to do a three-day fast. And you see, a three-day fast throughout the Word of God. So it's biblical. It's not something weird at all. We know Paul, the apostle, fasted for three days, and he was three days without sight, neither to eat nor drink. Queen Esther instructed Mordecai, hey, listen, go on a fast for three days. And we read in Esther 4.16, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me, neither eat nor drink there three days, nights, or day, and also my maidens will fast likewise. And so I will go unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. But what I want you to understand is that I want to encourage you that you would fast for the Lord. I would encourage you that, you know, we're going to meet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So if you're going out, we'll have some hotlines out there, amen. So if you're going down, you get a hotline, pick it up and say, I don't know what to do. We'll tell you what scriptures to eat. We'll tell you to do this and to do that. Dolores is a hotline person. Mr. Walls is a Mr. Walls is a hotline person. I'm going to need some hotlines. Amen. <laughs> you know, what, I, what I want us to think, there's a wrong way of fasting, though. And this, we don't want to do a wrong way of fasting. The book of Isaiah 58, verse 1 to 3, here God begins to explain how the people of God were fasting, but they were hypocrites when they were fasting. They weren't fasting in the right way. I mean, I want to fast in a right way before the Lord. And we read something here, it says in Isaiah 58, verse 1 and 3, Cry aloud, and stir not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls, and you have not taken notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all of your labors. And here today, God's showing us the way what God's people were doing. They were fasting in a wrong way. As they were fasting in a wrong way, God explains to them, you guys are a bunch of hypocrites. That's why I'm not going to answer your, your fast. I'm not going to even acknowledge your fast. You can fast all you want, and I'm not in it at all. And that's a sad thing if we fast and God ain't in it at all. But let me tell you why he wasn't in their fast. Let me tell you what, what's going on in Isaiah 58. God begins explaining to them they were fasting. They were literally in worship. They were in church. As I was talking last Sunday, they were in the house of God. They were worshiping, but their hearts were far from God. They were in the house of God. They were here but they were not listening to the voice of God at all. They were not literally letting God transform their lives. I want you to know that God desires as God's people, and there's this theme of our month this month, is to say, God, I want you to change me. I want transformation. Understand that when a person gets saved, when a person gets born again, it's impossible to stay the same way. When a person is truly born again and saved by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, that life is transformed. That life you can see. That life no longer wants to live the same, talk the same, walk the same. That life wants to honor God. And the things that are out of line with God are the things that man and that woman say, listen, I'm going to get them right before God. I'm not going to dishonor God. I'm not going to come against God. And that's what God is saying. Because you guys are a bunch of hypocrites. You're not changing your life at all. You're, you're coming into service. You're worshiping me. So you think, but I don't notice it at all because your lives don't match up with your lifestyle. And it's very important we realize this today. Because we don't want to be a people that we just fast to fast. But I want to fast. Man, I want God to change my life. I want God to transform me. I want things that are wrong in my life to be made right before God. I want to be sensitive to the voice of God. I want to have a relationship with my God. I want God to speak to me. I want God to heal me. I want God to restore me. I want revelation from God. I want an intimate relationship with my God. Don't you want that? When you look at this today... God begins to begin explaining to people, God, they were fasting, but they were hypocrites while they were fasting because there was no action. There was no change. There was no transformation. We have to ask ourselves, if we're saved, there should be a transformation. 
I mean, no, it should be a it should be a trans there should be a metamorphosis going on. I'm not saying it happens all at one time, but you should be going from glory to glory, from change to change. Our mouths should be getting saved. You don't be saying, I'm saved, blip, 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 blip. Right? That's Come a big on. one. We'll talk about that later on. Come on. We, we, that's a whole big one. Okay, well, it doesn't say nothing about cussing. Talks about make, not making unwholesome words. Every word you speak, you'll be accountable for what you say. Every idle word you speak, you'll be accountable for how you say it. We'll get that later on. But God begins to explain something today. God told Isaiah to shout aloud, like a voice, like a trumpet, to announce the sins of the nation. The people went to the temple of God. They obeyed God's law. They fasted, and they were eager to seek the Lord. They were eager to come to church. They wanted to come to church. They lined up for church. They sang the songs. They worshiped God. They did all those things. But what was happening, there was no change in their life. What they did was they came in the house of God, they worshiped God, go God, go God. They came to the altar before God, they gave their tithes before God, they began to give their hearts to God, so it looked like. But when they walked out, they were the same crooked people, they never were changed at all. And God says, listen, I want transformation, I want change. And that's what it does when you give God the Lord of your life, when you give Him your whole heart, and you say, God, I want you to sit on the throne of my heart. When you do that, God's able to change you. When you say, God, I don't want want to be the man that I want to be or the woman that you want me to be. I want to be what you want me to be, not what I want to be, God, but what you want to be inside my life. You see, today, God told Isaiah to shout aloud. They complained that nobody seemed to notice what they were doing. And think about what they're doing. Because look at their mindset. God says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily. And look at the mindset. They're going after God. They're going to church. They like to know my ways. They wanted to know God. I want to know Him. If you were to ask Him, do you love God? Yes, I love God. If you were to ask Him, do you want to learn and grow? Yes, I want to learn and grow. Do you want to worship God? Yes, I want to worship God. Why am I in the house of God? Hello? But what's happening today is that there was no transformation. They were not changing at all. They were eager to come to the house of the Lord. But all it was was outwardness. There was nothing changed in the inside. There was nothing going on inside their hearts at all. There was no transformation in their lives. Their hearts were far from God. Then they had the nerve where it says here, Yet they seek me, they did like to know my ways. The nation that did righteousness. As they, he says, as a nation, he says, but they're not. And, and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They asked me of ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching God. That means they said, man, I want to honor God. Man, they, they shout her down on the rooftops. They begin to tell, man, God is real. If you're to ask him, is God, man, God is real. He's real. But if he's real, we should be able to see it inside of your life. If it's real, it should be coming out of your pores. If it's real, it should be coming out of your mouth. If it's real, it should be walking out of your life. And it's here today that you begin to see as God goes on. They take delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted? Look at their mindset. They're like, man, why do we even fast for? That's what people do. You ever see people do that? And they come to church. Well, I already tried church. I've been there. I've been there, done that already. I already fasted. I prayed. Did nothing happen at all. Nothing in my life. But you know why it doesn't happen in life? Because God doesn't deal with hypocrites. Because God's listening. The reason why nothing's going on in your life is I'm not going to move if you don't want to change, if you don't want to be real. And then you got people that say that a lot. Well, look at I've been going to church. Ain't nothing happened yet. My marriage is the same way. My life is the same way. Yeah, but that same man will walk out of the house of God and curse his wife out. And God says, that's why I'm not moving in your life. That same person will sit there and gossip about somebody. And God says, that's why I don't hear your prayers. And it's important that we look what's going on. It's important that we realize that they're actually telling God, what's the use of fasting? What's the use of praying? What's the use to come to the house of God? He says, why have you fasted, they say, why, and you have not seen us? We afflicted our souls. We pray to you every day. We give to you. We do all these things to you. And they have the nerve to complain to God. But they didn't say that up front. In their hearts, God read their minds. They say, man, we don't even, what's the use of even fasting? They have the mindset like it doesn't even work. You ever do that and think that in your mind? You ever look at your house and look what's going on? It's like, man, it's not working. He would think about what's taking place because in their mind and in their hearts, they said, listen, we've afflicted ourselves. Can you even take notice? Don't you even see what we're doing? But look what he says. In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. He said, even while you're fasting, you continue to sin. You continue to do what you want to do. You can't even live the way you want to live. That's not how I roll. See, they complain that nobody seems to notice them. Worshiping God involves more than just observing an outward ritual. 
Worship comes from inside. Worship comes from inside. It comes outside. And that's what worship does. And one man said, if my religious duties and I am doing what pleases me, and if doing it does not make me a better person, then I am wasting my time and my worship is only sin. If you're coming to church and you're not getting transforming to Christ, let me tell you something, it is wrong. It is not life. Anything that has life begins to grow. When you have a relationship with God, it begins to grow. God begins to shed off the old man. We begin to put on the new man. It makes no sense at all to come to the house of God and to be rebellious towards God. It makes no sense to God to come and sacrifice your time and sit down before the Lord for an hour and a half and don't change at all. And this one man that said these words had it right on. If my religious duties and I'm doing what pleases me, if it does not make me a better person, then I'm wasting my time and my worship is only sin. Fasting and fine do not go together at all. Yet how many families walk fearlessly out of church at the close of a Sunday worship service, get in their family car, and pursue to argue with each other all the way home? True fasting will lead to humility before God and ministry to others. And that's what God began to see. God began to see them like, you're saying you're fasting. You're saying you're getting a hold of me. But I don't see no change. You still live the same. You still walk the same. You still do the things you do. You sit there and sin. And you don't think nothing of it. You expect me to accept that? You expect me to move for you? But you can't even have the obedience to move your heart towards me. Isn't that what you see in a world today? Sin in the world, everybody wants the blessing of God without the cross. Yeah. They want the blessing of God without, like, man, give me my whole heart. Or better say, is I want the paycheck, but I don't want to work. That's how it is. And God begins explaining them why he wasn't accepting their fast. Look what it says here in verse 4 and 5. Indeed, you fast with strife and debate, to strike with the fists of wickedness. These guys are fighting with people. These guys are duking it out with their brothers and sisters. If you guys are fighting, you're arguing, you'll get along with people. And you, you want me to bless you? You want me to help you? I hope we ain't got no issues in here. Because if you do, God ain't going to bless you. You just be going in circles your whole life until you get it one day. And this is what you have to understand. They were fighting with one another. They were fight, fist fighting with one another. This is, he says, you will not fast if you do this day to make your voice heard on high. He was saying, you can fast all you want. I don't hear nothing you're saying. You're just doing it for nothing because I'm not involved in it at all. He's honestly, he goes, he says his words, it is a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul. It is to bow down and stand like a bulrush, to spread out the sackcloth and ashes. Would you call this a fast as an acceptable day to the Lord? He tells him, man, you don't know what a fast is. A fast is humility. A fast is like, man, God, whatever you want to do, do in my life. Whatever you want to break, break it out. Whatever you want to shape, shape it out. Whatever you want to do, do it, God, in my life. That's what fasting is. Is coming before God and saying, man, God, you're right, I'm wrong. Whatever you want to do, you do in my life. You see, God fast is a chosen fast. I like what it says in verse 6. This is not the fast that I've chosen. This is what God loves. A real that We see what a, a fast that ain't what God does. This is what a fast does when it's with God. And this is what God says here. This is what we want, the kind of fast. Is this not the fast that I've chosen, says God? To loose the bonds of wickedness. How many know I'm not that loose? I want the devil off my back. I want the bonds of wickedness off me. Freedom in God. To undo the heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. And then you break every yoke. How many of us have yokes in here? Well, you're sitting here, you're still bombarded all day long. Depression and oppression and all these things that are going on. God says, the kind of fast that I want, the kind of fast that I choose, will set you free. It will break every yoke out of your body. It will lift the heavy burdens off of you. It will make you be free. It will break everything out of your life. Look at what it says. Is it not to share your bread with the hunger, hungry, that you bring to your house the poor, and you are cast out? You see the naked, that you cover them and not hide yourself from your own flesh? They tell them that it should be a lifestyle. A real fast begins to bring a life of Christ inside of you. A real fast says, man, I don't want to talk that way no more. I don't want to live that way no more. I don't want to act that way no more. I want to honor God and God. Whatever's going to dishonor you, I don't want any more inside of my life. That's a problem, but that's what real, true, biblical fasting does. So I thought about it. This might be kind of crazy when you read on it. Wow, that's a lot of stuff right there. So I want to break it down to you in the message Bible, just so you get a little clearer understanding. It says here, and I want to read the message Bible. I'm going to read a shout, a full-throated shout. Hold nothing back, a trumpet blast shout. Tell my people what's wrong with their lives. Face my family Jacob with their sins. 
They're busy, busy, busy at worship and left studying all about me. To all appearances, they're a nation of right living people, law abiding, God honoring. They ask me, what's the right thing to do? And love had to be on their side. That's what people like. Aren't you on my side? Look what it says here. But they also complain, why do we fast and you don't look our way? Why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice? Well, here's why. The bottom line on your fast days is a profit. You drive your employees much too hard. You fast, but at the same time you bicker and you fight. You fast, but you swing a mean fist. The kind of fast you don't, you do, won't get your prayers off the ground. Verse five reads: Do you think this is the kind of fast day I'm after? A day to show off humility, to put on a pious long face and parade around solemnly in black? Do you call that fasting a fast day that I, God, would like? This is the kind of fast day I'm after. To break the chains of injustice, to get rid of exploitation in the workplace, to free the oppressed and cancel the debts. I'm interested in seeing you do, sharing your food with the hungry, inviting the homeless poor to your homes, putting clothes in the shivering ill clad, being available to your own families. Do this and the lights will turn on and your lives will turn around at once. Your righteous will pave your way. The God of glory will secure your passage. Then they will pray to God and God will answer you. Call out for help and I will say, here I am. A full life and emptiness of places. If you get rid of the unfair practices, quit blaming victims, quit gossiping about other people's sin. If you're generous with the hungry and start giving yourselves a down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your shadow lives will be bathed in sunlight. I will always show you where to go. I will give you a full life and the emptiness of places, firm muscles and strong bones. You'll be like the well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never drun, runs dry. Goes on to say, you'll use the old rubble of past lives to build a new, rebuild the foundations from out of your past. You'll be known as those who can fix anything, restore old ruins, rebuild and renovate, make the community a livable again. And all this to say this today, you guys, that God desires that we change. God desires that we say, man, God, here I am. You know what these people, they paraded themselves, called themselves, the, 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 the sons of Jacob, they, they proud themselves, called themselves the people of God. They proud themselves like, man, we're, we're Christians, we're soldiers of God, we love God with all of our hearts. It was crazy about the whole thing, God says, guess what, I'm not in nothing you're doing at all. And that's one of the saddest things to do is to come to the house of God and God says, you know what, you should have stayed home, because I don't do nothing you do. Sounds crazy. But think about how crazy it sounds to God when we come here to say, like these people were, but they weren't real with God. They weren't letting God change them at all. That's what was taking place. Are you saying I'm doing that? No. But I'm saying this is the kind of fast that God doesn't like and the kind of fast that God loves is when his people really want to fast because but I want to do what's right. And if you're really a born again Christian that is really serving God all your heart, you don't got to say nothing to nobody. People look at you and say, I can tell that you live with Jesus. I can tell by your walk. I can tell by the way you live your life. I can tell by your conduct. I can tell by the way you do things and how you live your life, how you're an example. I can tell. And that's what God's looking at, you guys. God's looking at the people and He says, man, I don't see no transformation. And I believe that we're living in these days, just like in Isaiah. That we're living in these days where so many people, man, they come to church, but you don't see no transformation. You see them, it's like, what's the difference between you and the world? It's the same thing. Not supposed to be the same like the world. Where everybody else do, not God. Not His people at all. And you look at this day, it's very, very important. That God is saying, listen, I want to bless you. And I want to help you. I want to restore you. But I can't until you get real with me. I can't until you want transformation in your life. You know, as I was saying last week, I didn't come to church to go to hell. But I think a lot of people, they come to church and they don't realize they're going to hell. They don't realize, like, man, you come to church and, man, you're going to end up in hell one day because you don't, you just think coming to church don't make you a Christian. It's coming to church and saying, man, God, hey, take my life. Man, God, I want to do what you want me to do. And I don't want to be the same person no more. I got in this mess because of what I am today. I want to be what you made me to be, God. And that's the thing that we have to understand when you look what's taking place in Isaiah's day. They were doing their own thing. They had mean worship going on. They were out there telling people, man, come out to church. They were out there. And, and, and then you look at it from Sunday service to this service. God's talking about his people. There ain't any people. There's just his people. That's the crazy thing. God is saying it has to go further than just you coming, but is there transformation? 
And that's what you have to look at your life. Look at your life and say, man, am I changing? Man, am I becoming more like Christ? Am I becoming more like Jesus or more like the devil? Am I becoming more Christ-like or am I going backwards in my life? What am I doing with my life? I say all that to say this, that God wants us to change. God wants us to come to Him and say, God, whatever you want to do. Does that mean you've got to fake it to make it? No. It just means that in the stillness, of the, in the silence of your heart, you say, God, you know what? I want you to do whatever you want to do in my life. Is it going to mean probably I'm going to change some friends? Yeah. Does it mean I'm going to have to break up with somebody? Yeah. Does it mean I'm going to have to do something different in my life? Yes. Is it going to hurt? Yes. Do I have to break some habits? Yes, you're going to help me break those habits, oh God. Is, is it going to take me, man? Is it going to cost me something? Of course it is. But I'd rather be at peace with God than be at war with God. I'd rather be at peace. I say all that to say this to you guys. I remember telling a guy a while back, and it's so real. I remember telling a guy, so this, you got to do two things. Either God's going to be your enemy, or that person. If you're going to break God's heart, or you're going to break his heart. Her it's up to you. What are you going to do? You do things right. It's going to cost us something. I don't want to ever break God's heart. I broke his heart enough already. Whatever is going to get in the way of that relationship with God, I'm not going to allow nothing to break God's heart at all. And that means it's going to cost me something. It's going to cost me my pride. Let it down. Be real. That's what I was talking about in worship. Don't be, don't let pride hold you in your seat. Man, come up. You need to come up. Altar call, come up. You need to come up. Whatever it is, align yourself right with God. We're going to be fasting Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But we're leaving, leaving God for miracles inside of our lives. Just the benefits of fasting. And I just want to just give three of them real quick. It frees the ca captives. And I don't know who's captive tonight from drugs or alcohol, anger, resentment, depression. Is this not the fast that I've chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the press go free, that you may break every yoke? Not only brings to free the captives, but it brings healing. Isaiah 58 verse 8 says, Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Man, that's amazing for God to be right there on your side. Not only that, but it brings wisdom and revelation. In the book of Daniel 9.3 it says, I set my face to the Lord God to seek my prayer supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Verse 21 of Daniel 9 says, Yea, whilst I was speaking the prayer, even the man Gabriel, which we know is angel, Michael, Michael, uh, Gabriel the archangel, whom I have seen the vision beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. You know, it's neat and it's powerful. The fasting does wonders. It does amazing things in our lives. You know what my biggest thing that I want? Man, God, I just want your church to be in unity. I want your church and your people, man, to break off the yokes, off their bodies and say, man, God, I want to be free inside of you. God's people need to be free. God's people need to go out and shout on the rooftops. God's people need to be delivered. God's people need to be healed. God's people need to understand that God has, God's not the one that has the problem. It's God's people that have the problem. God has said, listen, I desire to come into your life. I desire to do these things. We're going to ask me fast. We just want to come humbly before God. You know what you best thing you do with fasting? If you get hungry, eat the Word of God. If you get hungry, sit yourself down and say, man, you're going to talk to Jesus. Amen. Sit down and cry to God. If you're hungry, it hurts. Cry. It hurts. It hurts. And believe me, God will heal you. It hurts. Remember on Smeagol? Some of you got that, some of you didn't. <laughs> All I'm trying to say today, you guys, is that God wants to live in your lives. How many of we still have a great God?